Det här är fem minuter, en för lång tid att få in de här tre målen på. Här är Edlund som gör den ledda likatessen och fram den till Andersson. Andersson med skottet i mål och här avgörs nu matchen. 5-1 till Erika Andersson framspelad av... Hi again everyone, back again with another video. I'd just like to have a look at this goal here, which was scored by Falun, the pink team, against Jörn Scherping, the team in white. Right now, just to set the scene, the ball is with this Falun player here, and Falun are attacking in this direction towards the left of the screen. So this goal shows some interesting aspects of playing deep in the offensive zone around and behind the opponent's net. So I'll go through the analysis first and then towards the end of the video, I'll go through some ideas as to how this could be implemented if you were coaching or if you were a player. So I'll just move the video through so we can go into the analysis to start with. Okay, so to start with, I'll just have a look at the defensive pairings. So right now, the pink team, Falun, they have the ball in the offensive zone. It's with this player here. And you can see that they are outnumbered. There are four defensive players to only three attacking players. So four white players against three pink players. The pairings are fairly clear. At the ball, we have a pair here. In front of the net, we have a pair here. And on the back post, we have a pair here. And the spare white player here, they're free to roam or, or go wherever they please at the moment, at least. So that's fairly self-explanatory. So I'll just move it through a little bit further so we can see what actually happens and how three pink players end up scoring even though they're outnumbered. Okay, so here is where the critical move or moment has just happened. And it may not seem like much, but if we have a look at the pairings again, again, we've got one in the corner, one in front of the net, and this defensive player right in front of the net is paired up with this player behind the net. But what has happened is this attacking player here, originally when we looked at the pairings, they are on the back post here. And what they've done is they've switched sides behind the net. So essentially they are now on the front post and close to the ball. But the white player who is responsible for them defensively, this player here, they have not switched sides and followed them. They've essentially stayed on the back post or very close to the middle of the court here. And what that means is that if this player gets the ball, then they have no one stopping them from attacking this space here. There's no one blocking their path into that space. It should be this white player here, but the white player has not followed them to the other side of the net. And that ultimately is what happens. The pink player gets the ball, and attacks that space immediately. So I'll just play it through and we'll have a look at a couple of the details on that. You can see here, as soon as this pink player has got the ball, she knows exactly where she's heading, straight into that space because she's unobstructed. Any hesitation here, and one of the white players, probably this one here, would be able to close her lane into that area. Now I'd like to make a couple of points just about the path that this player took here. So originally they were down pretty much on the boards and now look how far out they've come. They're all the way out pretty much at the top of the goalkeeper area and they end up coming out a little bit further. And this is what is called a walkout, particularly by ice hockey coaches, essentially because the player is not wrapping around and going for a quick tuck in on the near post. They're walking the ball out from the boards behind the net into a favorable shooting position. What she did was she used the space that was available to her. So if we take it back a little bit here, the space is in this area here. 
And she recognizes that and uses that space. She does not try to force her way into this area here because presumably she knows that this player and this player would probably be able to close that down. Likewise, having another pink player in there is going to just make it more crowded and give her less space to work with. So she makes a really good decision in basically taking what's available and following it through, even if that technically takes her further away from the net. So she's just released the shot and have a look at how much distance she's covered. She's come from the boards essentially all the way out to probably two meters above the goalkeeper area. And she did that by just using the available space. And what it actually resulted in was as she took that space and as she moved out from the boards, every step she came away from the net, she actually improved her shooting angle because if she was taking a shot down here in line with the goal line she'd have almost nothing to shoot at because the goalie would be blocking the very small slither of net that's available to shoot at but as she comes out each step her shooting angle improves which means that the net as seen from the ball's point of view gets bigger and more of the mouth of the goal is facing the ball and she ends up releasing the shot when she's almost directly in front of the net here so her shooting angle is very favorable but that all came from her not forcing her way into the area in front of the net and instead taking the space that was available and that led her to finding more space out in this area here where she could get a nice clean shot away. There's one other thing that I would like to look at with this clip. It's not the crux of the goal, but it is an important detail and it is interesting to look at. This player here actually runs a player screen for her teammate as her teammate comes out from the boards. So I'll show you what I mean. Now, once this player here has received the ball, you'll see this pink player here. They're going to come around the far side of the player that's marking them. So they're going to go ball side. And this has two effects. Number one, it opens them up for a pass because they're essentially shielding the ball from the player that's marking them so they may be able to get a pass in this movement that is not disrupted by their defensive player and they could potentially get a shot away from here now i think it's a little bit difficult for this player here because they're a lefty and they'd be shooting on the backhand but it's an interesting detail nonetheless now the second effect of this movement around the ball side is that it essentially blocks this white player here from moving into that lane that is available for the ball carrier. So I'll just move it through and you'll see what I mean. See, as of right now, this white player here could potentially take a step in this way and close the lane down for the ball carrier if it were not for the pink player in front of her directly taking that step away. The white player has no ability to move that direction. So if they want to attack the ball carrier, they either need to go this way or they need to go this way. And you'll see this white player actually decides to switch players and tries to attack the ball carrier and stop her, but she's unable to close the gap between her and the ball carrier. If this pink player was not blocking that path, it would have been an easy option for this white player to just step in and stop the ball carrier from advancing as far as she did. Okay, so what can we take away from this clip and try and implement ourselves, either as a player or if we're coaching a team? Now, the main point is just that if there's an attacker going behind the net, that they should test the defenseman 
to see what they're going to do. Particularly if the defenseman is going to stay in front of the net, this attacker probably just wants to switch sides, either going towards the ball or away from the ball, depending on which side they start on, and just see if the defenseman follows. Do they follow with them either way, or do they just hold one side? If they do follow, then you know that space is available on the opposite side for when that player gets the ball, they can attack into that available space by simply dribbling behind the net and trying to walk it out from there. If they do not follow, then the space will be available on the side that the player has moved to. They should be able to walk the ball out immediately and have space to drive into. Now, obviously, this is all contextual depending on the position of the other players on the court. One other thing that may be worth trying is having the player start in line with one post behind the net, but having the intention to, when they receive the ball, or as soon as the pass is made, move quickly to the other side in the hopes that the defenseman will not be able to move across the front of the net as quickly, and they'll be able to find space to attack from there. So they are just a few ideas and pointers that occur in this scenario that could potentially be implemented. And the other point that I think can be taken away from this is the value of player screens. They're very subtle, they're not immediately obvious, but you can see that in this scenario, they are very valuable and they essentially allow the ball carrier to get into the space that they want to. So they can be practiced a number of different ways and they can occur all over the court, not just around the net, but something worthwhile to keep in mind and potentially try to implement if you're a player or a coach. So that's all I really have to say on this video. As always, I'd love to know what you think. So please leave a comment below. Let me know if you think that this concept is useful, these walkouts and, and testing that net front defenseman. Also, what do you think of player screens? I'd be interested to hear about that. And lastly, what do you think should have happened defensively here? The white team, they did have the numbers. They should have been able to defend against this successfully, but they were unable to. So I'd be very interested to read some comments on that. But as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Här är fem minuter, en för lång tid att få in de här tre målen på. Här är Edlund som gör den ledda likatessen och fram den till Andersson. Andersson med skottet i mål och här avgörs nu matchen. 5-1 är Rika Andersson framspelad av...